Yesterday, Sieraji spoke about two virtues found in the eight factors of the path. This is Arya. One of them is Arya, which means clean, pure, and excellent. This excellence can't occur if there's anything foul or dirty remaining. So the fact that it is excellent means that this foulness, defilement, is gone. Otherwise, it wouldn't be clean, it wouldn't be excellent. What makes this path excellent are the eight factors of the path. They lead to the end of suffering. This is described by the word dukakya gami. gami. They, they send one, they direct one to the end of suffering. So there is an incorrect method for sending one to the end of suffering, and there is a correct method. And this path is correct. It's, it said, sama. This is, it is not the wrong way to go. So today, Sayaraji would like to speak about this quality of the path as sama dukakya gami, in terms of both theory and practice. In the, in the word sama dukakya gami, Sayaraji will speak about what each of the parts of this word mean, one by one. Sama means systematically, according to the correct method. And dukkha, dukkha means suffering. Kaya means that it is gone, there isn't any more. And gami means that it goes to, um, that it goes to this place of where there is no more suffering. Sama also means that uh, inter- by being systematic, it means that it just follows cause and effect. So to explain about dukkha, there are many kinds of, of dukkha or suffering. But here, Sierraji will just speak about three kinds. And the first is vata, vata dukkha. So vata means something that revolves, it goes around, around and around, without a break. And in here, um, it's basically bad, uh, just being, just bringing bad results. There may be some good, but the results that they give are not significant in this cycle. And vata. So vata means that cause and effect are occurring in a cycle. So it said cause, effect, interconnected, go around. This is called a cycle in Pali, vata. And first of all, we must understand about this. What is going around in a cycle is mind and matter. They revolve as cause and effect. Every time a new life occurs, one slowly ages. There's also sickness, bhyari, and there's death. No one doesn't die. Everyone who's born dies. If one has a body, there will be physical suffering. With a mind, there's mental suffering. And when our family passes away, we experience sorrow, we cry. So uh, no one can avoid these occurrences in life. 
So one can draw the conclusion that because there is a new life, these forms of suffering arise. As far as happiness goes, there is no type of happiness that is guaranteed. Of course, there is the happiness that most people like, which is the happiness of sense pleasures, enjoying beautiful sights, lovely sounds, delightful fragrances, tasting good things, having nice things to touch. So people think very highly of these types of pleasures, but there's nothing to them. And so people spend most of their time with pursuing these types of pleasures. However, this type of pleasure is has dangers, and these dangers are enough to lead to our death. The world is basically seething, boiling hot, because of following sense pleasures. The Buddha searched for a happiness that is free of suffering, that is free of this new life and the suffering that is entailed in a new life, free of physical suffering, free of mental suffering. He searched for this type of happiness. And he saw that suffering goes around in a cycle as cause and effect. And he described three group, groups, three types of cycles. First of all, the cycle of kilesas, or defilements. And second of all, the cycle of actions, kamavata. Clean actions and unclean actions. And third, the results, good and bad, of these clean and unclean acts. So the Buddha preached that there are these three, kilesa, kama, vipaka. These three are called the cycles. Among these three, when we say kilesa vata, we don't mean all the kilesas. We mean the ones that are the important causes, and there are three of them. First, avijja, and then tanha, and then upadana. Avijja, not knowing the true dhamma, not knowing suffering, the truth of suffering, not knowing the truth of its cause, not knowing the truth of the end of suffering, the cessation of suffering, and not knowing the path leading to it. This is avijja, ignorance. Not knowing suffering as it is, as suffering, one thinks instead that it's happiness. Not knowing the cause of suffering as its cause one takes it as the opposite, the cause of happiness. Not knowing the end of suffering as something good, but instead seeing, seeing that as fearful. No new life seems like eternal death. So people don't see that cessation is good. And then one doesn't know the correct path, apati pati avijja, ignorance of the path that leads to the end of suffering. Also, one takes as something which is not the path to the end of suffering as the path. This is seeing the path in the wrong way, mecha pati pati avijja. So, most in the world, most people in the world are like this. Not knowing 
one craves. There's with tanha, which is hungry. Tanha hungers and wants. Tanha is like a snake that is going after a frog. When it gets the frog, then it doesn't let go. It holds on tight. So this going after the frog and then catching it. Catching it is like grasping onto it firmly so as not to let it go, is upadana, clinging. So there's kamupadana, that is the desire, going after the desirable things. And then in connection with that, there's the concept that I, I caught it, I'm catching it. And one on top of that, there can be the concept that a creator, a a large self, is causing, causing one to do things. So these are detupadana. These are the, the grasping onto view. So there's avijja, tana, upadana. These three ignorance, craving, and clinging make up the cycle of kilesas. And for most people, every time they're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, thinking this is what is happening, not knowing, craving, and clinging, not knowing, not knowing what is true. So not knowing the truth and also knowing things in the wrong way. So this is kilesa vata, the cycle of kilesas. Not, not knowing the truth and knowing wrongly, craving and clinging. These three are the cycle of kilesas, avijja, tana, upadana. And if they arise, if this cycle of kilesas arises, then following on them there are actions. Actions led by greed or by hatred or also by delusion. And when one's mindset, one's mental attitude is good, then mostly good results. But when one's mindset, one's attitude is wrong, in error, then there will be greed. And when one can't control the greed, then there will be actions. There will be anger and actions based on that anger. And there will be delusion, actions based on the delusion, and also delusion, moha, will occur every time there is either greed or hatred. When greed or lobha becomes extreme and one can't control it, then one commits acts such as stealing. One commits acts such as rape, assault, uh, against either young people, against other people's spouses, for a man, uh, th- having having sexual relations with another man's wife is uh, falls in the is something that people can do and people do uh, for women going uh, going with a man other than her spouse and people can also lie based on greed because based on what they want and when anger dosa is not under control then people commit acts such as killing, torture, and they they do various things to try to destroy others. And they lie in order to harm others because they're angry. When delusion, moha, is out of control, then one one does actions such as taking drinks and drugs hallucinogens. And these, um, 
these things first. At first, maybe they make one feel a bit woozy, and then they lead to being drunk, and they destroy the basic mind. The mind is uh, no longer normal as the result of drugs and intoxicants. And with that abnormal mind, then people can perform acts that are transgression, trans- transgressions. They can harm, assault others, uh, have sex, and they can even go to the extent of killing under the influence of drugs and intoxicants. So because people can't control greed, hatred, and delusion, loba, dosa, and moha, they commit misdeeds. And committing misdeeds is like taking poison. One is sure to get bad results, and there's no one that can save you from these results. Uh, there's no one that can protect protect you. It's it's we ourselves that do the actions that are causing us harm. Just like if we take poison, we're the ones who took it. But if the mindset is good, if one's mental at, uh, at mental the way one puts one's mind is basically good, then one will get good results. And some people, they want to go to the Brahma worlds, so they develop the jhanas, which is the kama, the action that is needed in order to be born in the Brahma worlds. And some people want to become, be born as humans. So they perform the actions that lead to being born as a human. So when one's mindset errs, then one will do the wrong thing. One will do harm. And if one's mindset is good, then one will do good and good things will come. So in doing doing wrong and doing good, these, these aren't ineffective when something is done that is good or bad, a good or bad action is done, it brings a result. And the result is just like the result that comes when we eat food that we're allergic to or is not suitable for us, that eating that food brings us bad results, suffering, and eating food that is good for us and suitable brings us good results, comfort, and health. So for the most part, people just go around uh, with these cycles of kilesas and kama. Kilesas or defilements and actions based upon those defilements. People just go around and around with these cycles. These Base actions, unclean actions, and good actions, as they are sankara, as this word indicates, although they arise and then pass away, they leave a seed. So the actions leave a seed behind, which brings results. And these results are called vipaka vata, the cycle of results. There are two kinds of results, primary results and secondary results. So due to the wholesome and unwholesome karmic seed from a past life, one becomes either human or animal, for example. And uh, this new life begins at the moment of conception, when the sperm of the father and the ovary of the mother combine in the womb of the mother. So this is the start of the cycle of results, vipaka vata. 
And at that moment of conception, called in Pali, Patisande, uh, there's the mind, consciousness, and there are also concomitant mind states called Jetasikas. And there's also very subtle matter, very, very fine. And this occurs every second of the time in the new life. And gradually it is affected by the mind and by the, the environment, by the weather, Udu, and by nutriment, Ahara. So these gradually affect the, uh, this, the mind, concomitant mind states and the rupa, matter and they make it grow. <clears throat> so then when the fetus is born, there begins things like seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. So these are secondary results. And the good karma that is done brings good results. The bad karma that is done brings bad results. So this, these, this cycle of results is what is called vipaka vata. A human life is basically vipaka vata. With kilesas not cut off, kama continues, so do, so do results. So that when the three cycles are occurring, if the cycle of kilesas is not cut off, if it doesn't come to an end, then the cycle of actions, kamavata, will keep on going. And as long as the cycle of actions, kamavata, keeps on going, there will be the cycle of results, vipakavata. And when a, in, when a new life occurs, Within that, um, that new life are the seeds of avijja and tanha, ignorance and craving. So this is a bad element that is combined and is part of the new life. And based on this avijja and tanha, uh, ignorance and craving, the new life occurs. So, based on the kilesas, actions occur and further results. So, lifetime after lifetime, this happens again and again. So, one can draw the conclusion that when kilesas are not cut off, then kama continues and so do results. So, that's, that's all there is. If we examine how a tree grows on the earth, what is it that supports the tree? What is it that keeps the tree alive and growing? So the trees that grow on the earth, they're green and they are flourishing. So they have the earth, they're they're in the ground and they have moisture and they also have oxygen and when the tree has these then it will it will flourish so the there in this there is cause and effect when the tree has moisture then it will bud and it will flower and bear fruit. If there's no water for the tree, if, if it can't, uh, if there's no earth, if it doesn't have any sunlight or oxygen, then how will it be able to have buds and leaves and flowers and bear fruit? Because it has these things that it needs to grow, then it grows like this. It has buds, has leaves, flowers, and bears fruit. In time, it leaves behind a seed. 
and one can plant that seed and see what happens. So the tree doesn't just go to waste. It leaves something behind for a new tree to develop. And when we plant it, we see that a tree will sprout. No one can deny that this is what happens. So the tree that sprouts in the earth although it doesn't want things the way humans do, but it needs things like moisture, it needs the sunlight, it needs the ground. It needs these things. Uh, We say it like that. They don't actually demand it or crave it or want it, but according to their makeup, this is what they need. And when they get these things, then they flourish. There are various kinds of trees growing on the earth. And there are various groups, types of trees. And some of these bear fruit. So let's compare a tree which bears fruit with a human being. The tree which bears fruit, it has this moist element. It has sap within it. And the humans, uh, by comparison, they have the sap of kilesas, of vijatana and upadana, ignorance, craving, and clinging. In a tree, because it has sap, this element of moisture within it, it's able to develop buds and flowers and fruit. And it, In human beings, by comparison, because of this sap of the kilesas, there is good kama that is performed and bad kama that is performed. So from this sap, because because of fruit, because of having fruit, within the fruit, there's the seed for a new tree, if we think of the tree. And for the human being, because of the good and bad action or karma karma that they do, there's a new life that comes. So what supports the sap for a tree is the earth and the oxygen. Oxygen and earth support the sap so that it's, it's healthy. And for humans, what supports the sap of the kulesas is the happiness of sense pleasures. And this is, um, this is realistic, this type of comparison. So to speak about the lumber industry, there are some terms that are used in the lumber industry, at least... Uh, These are maybe old English, but improvement, felling, thinning, thinning a forest, the process of girdling a tree. I'm not sure, these, I think these are the British terms, so. Um, but anyhow, when you want to harvest trees in a teak forest, the trees mature at about 30 years, and So when you want to chop down teak, you want to, you need to slowly dry up the sap within the tree so that the tree will be easy, easier to chop down. And to, to cause the sap to dry up, one has to peel a strip of bark all the way around uh, near the base of the tree, about one foot above the ground. And because of uh, peeling off this strip of bark all the way around the tree, this is called girdling, uh, the tree is not able to draw up moisture coming from the earth through the roots. And it's not able to uh, get oxygen to go all the way down either. So this causes the sap to dry up in the tree, and the tree dies. 
So this is what people do when they want to fell teak, when they want to chop it down. They first dry up the sap and then they can cut it down. So for humans, in order not to have a new life, if one doesn't want to have another lifetime after this one, then one has to dry up the sap that is fed by the <clears throat> by sense pleasures, the kilesa sap. So with the example of the tree, one uh, causes the sap to dry up by interrupting the flow of it through the tree. And for humans, what is involved is every time they're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, one has to apply sati when experiencing these, the sense objects, the desirable sense objects. And then there will be also virya and samadhi. So like the tree, drying up the sap of the tree, so too one will have to dry up the sap of the kilesas by applying sati. So tomorrow, Sieroji will talk about this more in terms of theory and practice, how a single tree is like a single life, and how the, uh, the lumberjack, the person who, who wants to fell the tree, is like the yogi drying up the sap so that the tree doesn't bear fruit and so that the tree dies. It's like drying up the sap of the kilesas so that there's no more kama, which will result in a new life. And one has to... Um, the tree dying is like this... The, there's no more sense pleasures that are causing the sap of the kilesas, which in turn bring about actions and new life. So Seiraoji will speak about this tomorrow in terms of theory and practice. And in this way, the yogis will understand very well what is meant by vata dukkha kya, uh, the drying up of the cycle of suffering.